Hi, I'm Michael with Deacon Woodworks. Today I'm going to build a stop block system for the miner saw station. Stick around, I'll show you how it's done. Hi there, so as you can see here on my chop station here, I only have a small amount of fence space to deal with, and I really can't use a lot of uh, multiple repeatable cuts on this system. It's just not working for me in the type of things I like to do. I also have a little bit of a design issue. When I built this, I didn't know what I needed. So in the midst of learning and growing in my shop, I probably should have shifted this to one side or the other to have repeatable cuts on one side rather than split it across both sides. But I am where I am. So as you saw in the preview, I've got a little bit of a design challenge in my workshop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to build a miter saw stop block system a la Jay Bates. So as you can see here in the SketchUp, I've obviously done this already, but we'll walk you through how I built it. And then I'll walk you through how I build our cut dimensions. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start with the build of the actual miter saw station. So let's get into a uh, fresh SketchUp So let's. Uh, so one of the things that I like to do is I like to build from the ground up. For me, it just makes more sense. I can build the bottom pieces, build it up, put tops on, build things from there, so on and so forth. Move into a top view here. We're gonna go R for rectangle from the origin and over. And my first piece is 37 and 3 8 inches long by, we're gonna use 3 quarter inch plywood here. Rotate this around a little bit to get some more perspective on it. Space bar to release, P for push, pull, and we're gonna raise this up two and a quarter inches. And again, we can see this is going to be where the uh, top track fits on, and this is where the stop block front will be. Space bar to release, triple click, G for component, and that's our first piece right there. We're gonna build a box in which the shelving units on it will be built. So we're gonna basically build a standard box with a middle support to support any weight that we need. So we're gonna to click to release R for rectangle at this point of endpoint origin over here. We're gonna drop it over here, three quarters of an inch. Space bar to release, P for push pull, and this one's gonna actually come up only one and a half inches. This one, uh, as you will see in, in a little later, the top track will come in here and we're gonna keep a little space in here for the back of that top track. So we're gonna triple click G for component. Our next component, let's build the struts going out, the ones that will enclose the sides and middle of the box. So we're space bar to release, click to deselect. We're gonna go R for rectangle here, end component, and we're gonna come out this way. Um, and our first dimension on the right hand side is going to be our width or thickness of the material. So we're gonna go 0.75 inches and we're gonna go our length or of or depth of the of the unit is gonna be 16 and 3 sixteenths inches. Oops, let's try that again. 16 and 3 sixteenths inches by 0.75. There we go. Spacebar to deselect, P for push, pull, and this is gonna go up. Obviously, we're gonna go up to 1.5 inches to make it there. Spacebar to deselect, triple click G for component, and there we go, right there. So now let's uh, move this. We're gonna zoom in a little bit here. We're gonna move this on the end point. And since I'm on a Mac, it's option, but option and shift to copy and drag along the red axis to the endpoint over there. And then we're gonna take another one here, M for move, option for copy. And we're gonna to go to the midpoint of that. Now, since we know this is the midpoint of this component, I wanna actually have it centered on it. So I know it's three quarters an inch. So we're gonna go M for move on this here and we're going to shift it along 3 eighths of an inch. And that basically puts us at the midpoint of the component and the center of the, the middle support structure uh, right on that component. So we're gonna shift this thing around a little bit. Spacebar to deselect, click to unhighlight. We're gonna click this component here 
and we are going to move this one and copy it as well to the back side. And we're gonna put that there. So basically now we have a box structure. We have our fence for the miter saw station uh, in place and everything looks good. So let's go to a, let's just move this thing around here. We're gonna build the top of this box right here. We'll start over in this corner here, R for rectangle, and we're gonna go up to this corner here, P for push, pull. We're gonna bring it up three quarters of an inch. Triple click, G for component, and right there. So when you can see we drew the top, two things occurred. First one was it goes all the way across so we don't have a space in here for the back of the Craig top. We're gonna to shift around here, we're gonna use we're gonna select this and uh, shift H, which is a custom keyboard shortcut I use for hide. We're gonna select this, double click, click in here, push, pull, and we're gonna move this back quarter of an inch, okay? What that does is that's gonna give us the reveal we need for the back of the Craig top track. We're gonna use shift U for unhide, and that's going to give us that back. So I recommend using that. And then D for dimension is another one that uh, Jay Bates recommends a lot for shortcuts. So basically we now have our bottom here, okay? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go up to view, animation, add a scene, and we're gonna rename this to stop block, okay? We're also gonna go up here to animation settings and deselect scene transitions just so it's quicker. So here we have our base, <clears throat> pretty basic. Uh, we have room for the Craig jig to go in here and we'll build the top components up here. So we're gonna go over here. So we're gonna go R for rectangle. We're gonna build the base of the upper cabinets here. So we're gonna go, our first dimension is going to be our length of the unit. So we're gonna go our 37 and 3 eighths of an inch, and our depth of that is going to be seven and a quarter inches. So there we go. Select this, push, pull, and we're gonna come up three quarters of an inch for the thickness, spacebar to release, triple click G for component. So that's the base of that cabinet. We're now gonna build the sides of this and they needs to be the three quarters of an inch wide but we need them eight inches tall in order to fit those Hoyt units so we're going to go r for rectangle endpoint come down here and our first component is 0.75 inches so there we go now we're going to go p for push pull and we'll raise this up eight inches spacebar to deselect triple click g for component and there we go so what we need to do now is we need to kind of get into the middle section here. So um, I know that interior dimensions for the components for the Hoyt drill bits is 15 inches. So I'm gonna go T for tape measure here, go over here and I'm gonna go 15 inches. This gives me the reference point to build the interior cubbies and walls. We're gonna use half inch plywood for this to save a little space, gain us a little bit more cubby hole space. Uh, but we're going to go R for rectangle here, guide point up. And our first component is the half inch width. And that's that right there. We're going to go P for push, pull, and we're going to raise this up the eight inches of the height that we need. So let's move this around a little bit here. Um, I know, again, our 15 inches coming from here to here is needed for the extra Hoyt box. So we're gonna use that tape measure there. We're gonna go R for rectangle and build the other side of the cubby hole. So we're R for rectangle, P for P push, pull. And we're gonna go up to eight inches, okay? Triple click G for component, make that a component as well. G for component, triple click G for component, make that as a component. <clears throat> so if we move here to the front, let's do a little uh, little math here. If it's eight inches high and these are half inch boards, our midpoint would be four, but we gotta take half of an inch off, on a quarter of an inch on either side uh, to be the actual midpoint. So that makes it three and three quarters inches. So we're gonna go here, T for tape measure, up the side here, 3.75 inches. That gives us a tape measure there. R for rectangle here, cross and up. 
the half inch, which is our second dimension. <clears throat> we'll spin this thing around so we can get on the back side of it. And I'm sure there's an easier way to do it. We're gonna go here, P for push pull. And we know that it's seven and a quarter inches in length. Spacebar to release, triple click G for component. There's that. So we go move to our stop block uh, scene up here, which gives us the ability to go back to the top. And we know that we're going to just repeat this thing and move it up top. So what we'll do is we'll spin this thing around a little bit so we have better access to the points on it. Spacebar, select this one. M for move, option for copy, shift to keep it on the axis, and we're gonna move it up on the blue axis to the end component up there. So now we've got the top. All right, so we've done all of that. We can now take this and we'll go here. We wanna build the quarter inch hard boards that we're gonna put up on top. Pretty easy to do. We're gonna go R for rectangle on the top one up here, move it to this corner, P for push, pull, raise it up a quarter of an inch, triple click G for component, and then we'll do the one down here. Now the one down here is gonna be slightly different. I'm gonna to wait to do this just for a second because I wanna pull the Craig jig in here first and then I can get an actual dimension of what this size of the board is. So as you can see, I just brought in the color palette window. So let's put some colors to this so that we have some understanding of what each and everything is. So we're gonna use tangerine, I guess, here for the hardboard. Um, all of our horizontal components, let's do in, uh, let's do in sky, right? So here, here, here. And then our vertical components for the half inch plywood, let's just use uh, green. Um, I like lime, a la J Bates. Uh, and then our vertical components at three quarters of an inch, we'll use, uh, well, a banana looks pretty good. So we'll color this one, this one, all of these. Make sure we go underneath and we'll be for the paint fill tool, fill these two in. And we've now got a kind of a color system in which we can, we can, uh, manipulate and look and, and understand which pieces are which, which ones are horizontal, which ones are vertical, uh, which are half, which are three quarters, and which are a quarter inch ply. All right, um, let's get this Craig thing in here. So what we do is go to File, 3D Warehouse, and Get Models. And what this will allow us to do then is we'll pull up a 3D Warehouse model and we're gonna type in Craig Track. Now mind you, it's not with a C, it's with a K. Um, oh, and look, here's one right here by Patrick B. So we click on that and take a look. Yeah, that's exactly what we need. It uh, is a top track with a stop block and uh, here and uh, a couple of them. Uh, I won't be able to use this one here, but we're gonna download that. We can take care of that pretty easily. We hit download, Do you want? yes, and we will put it into the model. So as you can see here, it's dropped it into our model and we can click on it and it's relatively large. So I'm wondering why that's the case. So let's do this, let's explode this and now we have it looks like a couple grid lines up there and this stop block which we're not going to use that anyway so let's hit delete that cleans it up a little bit and let's see what's going on here okay so it looks like everything's there um, we're gonna go G for component and make that a solid component so that's good. So uh, we now need to rotate this. I'm not gonna hit the rotation, but we're gonna give this a shot here. So we're gonna rotate this, I think on the blue axis. Yep, that looks good. We're gonna go 90 degrees. So now we've got this. Just kind of move around a little bit and see how this is gonna play out for us. Zoom in here a little bit. So we know that the top track goes basically in here. So the three quarter inch ply that's here will go into this area here. This should be flush with the front. Select this M for move. We're gonna use this end group in the end component there. And we're gonna see if we can put it right there. Boom. I think that worked. That's awesome. So zoom in here a little bit. Let's take a look in here. So we have a couple things. One, um, this com these angle things here, the way this thing was designed may or may not be 100% accurate. So 
We're just gonna leave the fact that there's an overlap here and here alone. I'm not, I'm not anticipating it being an issue. As a matter of fact, having been outside and tested with it, it's not really an issue. Uh, and worst comes to worst, you can always you know, chamfer off a little bit of the corner here, a little bit of the corner here. It's not gonna be seen, uh, and it'll get you a nice, clean, tight fit if that's what you were looking for, or if it actually needs to be that way. Now, one of the catches you'll notice here is it's not long enough, so it's pretty easy to fix. We're gonna go in here, triple click, select this, P for push pull, Whoop. triple click in here, select that end, P for push pull, and we're gonna drag it all the way to the edge. That's great, that worked out well. At this point, we have a solid left-hand side of the stop block system and it's uh, looking pretty good. So let's go ahead and start building the, the dust shroud for. So to do that, we're gonna, we're gonna start up here and we're gonna go R for rectangle at this corner. We're gonna come up here and over here, which we know is one foot tall and, and seven and a quarter inches wide. What we need it to be though, is we need it to be 20 inches high by 13 and 1 16 inches there now if we scroll back zoom back out we can see it's a little higher which is makes sense because the top of the saw is going to be is going to be higher so we're going to push pull this and we're going to push pull it out three quarters of an inch okay space bar triple click g for component that's our side piece and as we talked about earlier you can see how this ends up being the side component for it. Our vertical components are yellow, so we're gonna do that. Now, I don't know what my final dimensions are gonna be on this thing here, but let's just call it 30 inches for the purposes of our model here. Uh, we're gonna take this component here, M for move, option for copy, we're gonna move this over 30 inches on the red axis. That's pretty easy, that gives us what we need on that side. Move this around. Now let's build the top. R for rectangle here to that corner to the end point there. P for push pull. We're going to raise this up three quarters of an inch. Space bar to deselect. Triple click G for component there. We'll color that that sky blue. All right, now we've got a basic shroud structure in place, but I would need to have something on the front side to prevent it from blowing dust back into me. So we're gonna create some side rails and things of that nature. So we're deselect that. R for rectangle, come up here, end point there, end point here, and we're gonna make that one uh, six inches in height. We can spin this thing around. P for push pull, come this way three quarters of an inch. Triple click, G for component, and there. Um, this will also be in our wonderful banana color. Come back around to the front. Now, so this looks good here. Problem is, is that it only has the top. I need some side protection on there as well. So we're gonna do a couple components here. We are going to do a little diagonal measurement on the side here just to kind of block it in a little bit better. R for rectangle here. And we're gonna go six inches by four inches. That gives us a nice one right there. And what we're gonna do is we need to make it a triangle. So to do that, you use the L for line and you go corner to corner. Space bar to release. And then with a right to left window or grab or whatever it's called, but what it will do is only select the things that that window is touching. We're gonna to take those and hit delete. Okay, we'll spin this thing around so you can see it's still flat. So we need to go in here and P for push pull and we're gonna go that three quarters of an inch thickness. Space bar, triple click G for component. There's that. We're gonna use the fill tool, the color tool, make that yellow. Go back to the stop block scene and as a matter of fact since we're already here let's do this let's zoom out a little bit get this thing centered up nicely view animation update scene so what we're going to do here is we're going to select this one we're going to do m for move option shift to move it online and on target move it to the end of constraint from the point obviously it's not right so we need to rotate it and i'm going to flip along the red axis. That gives me an exact mirrored copy of what we've got for the dust shroud and everything looks good there. 
So again, created the dust shroud. Obviously the miter saw station will go in here. There may need to be some tweaking on site, so to speak, to cut things out for the motor housing and handles or whatever may be there. Uh, but I think this gives us the basic shape of what we're looking for, which is, uh, which is what we're going for. So I'm gonna do uh, a couple things here. I'm gonna clean this up a little bit and we're gonna copy this over. So let's do this. Go here, Shift H for hide. We're gonna select this and this, Shift H for hide. Uh, we'll spin this thing around. So now what we do is we have our dust shroud and our left hand side. So we're gonna select all of this in here. We're gonna spin it around on the back side. And what we wanna do is we wanna mirror the left on the right. So the way my system is set up, there are basically identical dimensions on it. So what we're gonna do is M for move, option and shift along the component. And we're gonna drag this all the way over on the red axis to endpoint and component, okay? Zoom back out. <clears throat> and as you can see here, we now have a duplicate effort. So what do we need to do with this one? A couple of things. One, uh, we need to put the uh, end piece here, over here, right? Uh, so we're gonna move that one on endpoint, shift along the axis endpoint that puts it there but as you'll notice here we gained three quarters of an inch here and we lost it here so we need to move this entire component over three quarters of an inch so we're going to just select all three of these M for move shift it along that and we're going to shift it along three quarters of an inch so this should give us our dimensions here of 15 inches and 15 inches and we're good to go and we've replicated our stop lock on the left hand side so that's where we stand right now this is uh kind of what the miter saw station is going to look like in total and so i just took a little break came back to this and noticed two things uh, occurred one I forgot to put two vertical side pieces on this, so I incre uh, created a uh, four by, um, or excuse me, a six by 16 inch vertical on the side and moved those in to give it more encapsulated uh, view. But again, once we get into the shop, if anything happens, we can adjust those dimensions on the fly. Second component was I forgot to add the hardboard uh, back onto the small top here. So what I've done is I've, I've moved it over here and I've actually got to just take this and we'll zoom in here. I need to move this towards the end. So we'll put that there. So that's our stop block system for what we've got uh, for in the shop. So what we want to do now is we want to create actually the, uh, the, the cut list for this. Um, I'm going to use one as an example. I will show kind of the overall final one, but I think you'll get the gist of how we go about doing that. So let's, um, for simplicity's sake, let's just hide all of this over here, right? Let's get rid of all this uh, because in all honesty, it's just gonna make it a little confusing for us. So, so what I wanna do is I wanna select all this. I wanna move it and copy it over Okay, so what we've done is we've created a copy of this, which uh, when we build this or need to change dimensions or whatever, <clears throat> because this is a copy of what we had over here, it will change them respective to one another. So if I shorten this, it will shorten it on the other one. We're worried more about the layout. So let's go here and go endpoint here, just give us a point of reference. Um, we're gonna go four foot by four foot, okay? Um, this is gonna be our piece of wood that we had, whether it's scrap or whatever the case may be, but it's three quarters of a uh, four by four half sheet of, of plywood. We're actually gonna remove this, the interior component, triple click G for component, and that gives us basically a, a solid framework in which to work from. Um, now let's blow this thing apart, right? So we're gonna take this component. Now that we got rid of the axes, there's nothing, it, it aligns directly to everything, right? So we got rid of the axes. So the first one uh, we put is this, the top component right there. 
So let's grab this, and I know this needs to be rotated, so Q. Rotate this 90 degrees, and we're gonna move this one here as well. Now again, as you can see, it's not in plane, which is one of the bad things here. So what we need to do is we'll move this down here, this corner here, move it to the end component there, okay? Um, this piece and this piece are identical. So we're just gonna take this, M for move, control for copy, move that over there. Okay, so let's take the uh, the side pieces here. Rotate these around. Rotate this 90 degrees. Remove this one on its face this way. And I think what we can do is we can probably get both of these in this same space here. So let's rotate that around. 90 degrees this way. Again, we're going to have to spin this a little bit to move it around. We can get that there. And then because we're here, we can just option shift copy this over to this point. And as you can see, we are going to be able to get both of those pieces right there um, out of one section of the board. And Jay Bates is much more fluid at this than I am. So bear with me here. Every moment I do this, I learn something new. I get better tricks about dimensions and so on and so forth. And in all honesty, it's not that difficult of a software to learn. It's a rectangle, square, so on and so forth. Um, once you get some of the shortcuts done, it's great. A lot of it's just practice. So for those of you out there who've never used SketchUp or maybe feel a little intimidated by it, trust me, I was the same way. But once you get into it and start playing around and practice with it a little bit, it's not as daunting of a task to do. As a matter of fact, it helps me a lot when I'm designing things, especially from a cut list perspective. I find that to be very helpful so I can just get in the shop, start working, cut, 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 boom, I've got all my material set aside and I'm hammering things together. So it's nice that way. So as you would, as you would expect right in the midst of filming this video you get to the last component of it your computer freezes and sketchup freezes and you lose what you just did so fortunately I had done this once before uh, and what you saw at the beginning of the video so what you're seeing here is basically the end cut list for the entire components right so we basically laid out all the things that we had uh, on the other side uh, it's a four by six is what I had left over when I created it and I use the shortcut command D for dimension and you lay it all out. So it's D, so it's D for dimension here to here and that's what gives you that right there. This doesn't print very well, but once you, uh, if you size it up to the scale of the window and then hit command P or, um, it, or control P on a PC, uh, it will print things off. But this will give you the cut list to go in and do what you need. So I'm anxious to get out there and finish this darn thing. Uh, I want to create that dust shroud today and, and start working on cutting the list for uh, all, the second component, the, the right-hand side of the miter station. Uh, I got the miter track in last night for uh, the left-hand side, the top track, so I can install that, dial that bad boy in, and, and we'll be good to go. So anyway, thanks for watching. I hope this sketch of video gives you a little excitement towards what's coming next in my shop. Uh, more importantly, if anything, uh, it was my first attempt to try to do a SketchUp video. Uh, Jay does them so unbelievably well, it's kind of hard to live up uh, to his uh, capabilities. But like I said, I'm learning. This is part of the learning process, both in video making and in different tools and techniques. And getting out there, making mistakes, looking goofy on camera, um, losing your file midway through it, all those things are learning experiences and I relish them. I'm thankful for them. So there it is. Best of luck. Get out there, make something this weekend, and we'll see you next week with a build project on the Stop Block Station. Thanks very much. Take care, guys. Bye-bye.